to start this video out, we've got a merch drop, so the t-shirts are in. If you've seen on my Instagram, I've been posting up that I've been getting some t-shirts in, the battery room are in. So I'm gonna put this up in the video now. If you wanna go over to the website, the link will be in the description, unknownperformance.co.uk. Um, go on there, just click on shop, and you'll find these in. So I've got large, got medium, got XL, even got a couple of double XL. And I'll tell you now, like I would never sell you something that I didn't wanna wear myself. Um, I've been wearing these for the last six months or so. You might have seen it in some videos. Um, obviously, I've got hoodies as well, but these are t-shirts for the summer. Summer. the quality of these is great so the transfer that's on it doesn't come off doesn't peel doesn't disintegrate as long as you take the care warning so read this care warning once you get the t-shirts through so at the minute we're just going for the black because the black shows up the logo really lovely and um, I like black goes with anything but uh, in the future we're gonna go for greys blues whatever I'm um, gonna get some hoodies in as well for the autumn time but at the minute we're just gonna be selling the t-shirts and then we're expanding the range uh, if you want to support the channel I really really appreciate it so I just wanted to show you these shirts outside you can see the nice the quality of the material so I've different manufacturers I've used over the last six months to get these ones. See, it's a nice big logo as well, fills up the whole of the t-shirt. It took a little while to get these shirts like this. So I ain't just like, you know, some cheap crappy shirts that I'm selling you. Uh, these are gonna last you a while. And they're really comfy, really soft. I've got a lot of large ones. They'll be available on the site tonight while you're watching this video. They're up live. If you wanna go and grab one, Right, so welcome back to another episode, and this episode is gonna be about the Safira GSI. So we're going stage 3.5 with this car, as you know, and it's been progression. And we've obviously uh, gone to a Miltech exhaust system. If you haven't watched that one, go and watch that episode where we fitted the Miltech, the full system from the turbo. We have a nice stealth exhaust system on there now with a full resonator and a nicely quiet back box and tailpipe. So this episode, as you probably see, is all about fitting this intercooler. So we need to have a bigger intercooler on here because at the minute we've got a stock intercooler and the problem is with stock intercoolers, the air temperatures get too high. We are right on the limit of it at the minute and just fitting this intercooler, cooling down that air going into the engine is gonna help massively. So um, these engines obviously suffer with debt problems because the intercoolers are so small. The Astra VXR has a slightly bigger intercooler that goes like the full length of the radiator. You can see we've got the air comrad in there at the minute. We wanna try and make it work with that. So we're gonna see if we can. Got an additional fan there if I need it, like a slimline fan that I bought for it in case we need to get rid of this front one or move it. So you can see this is the stock intercooler that comes with the cars. You can see how tiny they are, but they incorporate the uh, map sensor into them. So when you do remove them or change them, you need to have a map sensor pipe. Now normally I make up the top pipe, but luckily um, this kit is a full kit and it comes with the map sensor bung comes with all the pipe work that comes around from the turbo and if you know these cores you know that this is a tube and fin design which is one of the best cores you can buy so for the size of it it's absolutely perfect for what we need uh, for stage 3.5 and it's going to be a low lag setup but it's still going to get their air temperatures down now you've probably seen that this was the original the Courtney Sport was the original intercooler and then places like MTC or China or whatever they are they copied it with an inferior core so um, the cores on these have flow so much better and cooled down the air so much better than the like MTC Chinese replica ones so that's why we went for the Courtney so we've got the Miltech system with a Courtney intercooler now so we're going for all the best parts on this car I'm not cheaping out on anything so I've just pulled off the front bumper you can see the stock setup that you find behind these <laughs> front bumpers with the air comrade and you know the radiator behind with the air intercooler attached to it you've got the air con fan on the front then you've got the radiator fan on the back and all this lot you know it just you know so messy you know what I'm like with um, OCD and that I just normally just pull all that all out but this time I'm gonna try and do this with the air con in uh, so that the aircon is still functional because this ain't no race car you know it's just a going to be a sleeper build but you can see the difference between that and something like this you know that has you know the radiator then you've got the intercooler at the front nice big intercooler and then you've got all this room at the back here for the pipe work and no fan and uh, just nothing gets in the way or even the same that's on my red GSI you can see obviously this slam panel's been cut out and smoothed and everything here uh, someone asked about rigidity but if you've gone and moved the slam panel on these things they actually move about just about they've got no rigidity to them all the rigidity is in these chassis legs here so you can see how much the alley radiator looks and you can get in like a nice big intercooler in here so you can see this one is a 90 mil core it's a Garrett cord intercooler and you've got the radiator there and you've still got clearance there for the fan Fans, just about you know spaced everything backwards spacers behind here um, obviously using the spaced rear mounts as well so you've got nice big intercooler to be able to fit in there and this goes behind the GSI bumper all I had to do is just trim the fog lights for obviously the outlets but that's about it so you can see even with all that without all the fans are moved and everything there's loads of room there
but you can see how tiny these stock intercoolers are and why that they can't handle much boost so I mapped the car to 15 psi at the minute uh, and it's literally on the limit of this intercooler probably past the limit but i knew obviously was going to be changing the cooler in the future and always monitor everything with afr and opcom um, so what i'm going to do now is just remove all this pipe work you can see this standard pipe was probably full of oil as well over the years just gets full of oil from the uh, mist that comes out of the breather pipes so i'm going to move that and probably leave this top pipe and make a hard pipe up in the future i've got courtney top hats and loads of other stuff if i want to put on it and then I have got a slimline fan if I don't need to use this one uh, we're going to see there is a bracket to move that over um, out of the way so we're going to have a look to see how that sits if I don't I'll just make a custom setup up right so here's a quick comparison here between the stock in the cooler thickness and the Courtney one and you can see the, the massive improvement and also the uh, comical outlets as well on the stock intercooler now, as opposed to the, the outlets on the new intercooler it's like literally i don't know 30 mil it's tiny and i think these are like 51 or 63 well, i normally use two and a half inch but i've not measured them ones yet they look a little bit smaller but obviously this is massively improved on the uh, stock intercooler which is tiny i know the intercooler cores on them are good you can see their tube and fin design as well and uh, the outlet has a map sensor um, pipe you can see there but obviously we've got that one coming off here in the same position so that's going to bolt to the slam panel so as i said this ain't no massive intercooler um, it's designed to be fitted with um, the aircon and this is the perfect intercooler for that i've got much bigger intercoolers than other cars but that's all deleted aircon everything and then we've got this outlet to stop like a lot of lag from a lot of pipe work and that because this car is just designed to be a quick responsive sleeper build so this is the perfect intercooler for it so if you're uh, looking for an intercooler that can keep your aircon and uh, you don't want to have to uh, use a cheap crappy uh, chinese make go out and find yourself a courtney one now these are quite expensive new i think that was like 600 quid 500 quid something ridiculous like that um, and they come with all the bracketry everything and you can see i've got this additional fan so on the courtney kit you have to move the radiator back a little bit obviously to fit this in with the aircon and everything so that you've got room behind the bump and then what we normally do to move the radiators back was use vxr radiator mounts you can see how much shorter they are so these are the stock gsi ones on the astra and the Safira, and obviously they fit like so and you can see that's the mounting point there and on the vxr that's the mounting point there so you've gained you know two inches or so uh, on the Courtney kit they actually come with brackets and the reason I'm going to use the Courtney ones I'm going to give them a clean up you can see that's how they looked a little bit weathered so I'm just going to give them a clean up and a lick of paint obviously and you can see how much shorter they are so that's the long one here that replaces that one and um, it drops here probably about I don't know half inch maybe pulls it back a little bit if I need any more I can switch over to the VXR ones obviously but you can see here not only does it do that but it drops it lower on the back the radiator so it drops it down i don't know uh, five ten mil something like that whereas the uh, stock radio only drops it down even less than that so that's why uh, the courtney kit is good because it gives you everything you need and obviously these are the spacers as well for the radiator you can see here that spaces the radiator back on the uh, plastic u-clips which i'll show you so if you don't know what radiator supports i'm talking about these are the ones i just showed you you see these are the this is the longer ones and then once you have a short ones it pushes it back inside the engine bay we've got loads of room here and then obviously these are the radiator supports as well which we're just going to pull off and then we'll be able to move the radiator back with that as well so you can see as, as soon as you take that bolt out you can literally push that radiator back and then we're going to spacer it out Right, next thing you've got to do is remove this radiator fan from the front of the radiator. Obviously, this is the aircon rad, and uh, Courtney have designed this bracket to sit here in the place of that, and it turns this radiator fan 90 degrees, so you can still keep this fan on the front, because as you can see at the minute, the radiator fan sits really low in the car, and obviously that's going to interfere with the intercooler. So uh, turning it 90 degrees obviously brings it up into the engine bay, and it gets more room for the intercooler. So you've got to uh, remove this plug, remove these two bolts and then you've got to drill a hole in the cowling which I'm going to show you how to do it's very easy to fit so you can see here this is how that bracket fits to the existing radiator mounts and then obviously it turns the radiator fan around 90 degrees like that and then on this flat part here you've got to drill a hole to mount this one in because it doesn't mount into the existing hole so you drill a hole into that and you can bolt it on so i'm going to do that now and show you how it fits see this is how the radiator fan is going to fit you can see it's been turned around 90 degrees and it just pushes on to where the uh, threads are there and then you can see the part that i'm talking about on the back here there's another threaded bolt hole there so you've got to drill a hole into there 
to uh, mount this one on and then the plug now is at the top as you can see so obviously this plug down here now needs to be undone from the conduit so you can move it to the top here and uh, then that's relocated and we can get on with fitting the intercooler so you can see here with the plug obviously we didn't have enough uh, length in it um, what I've done is I've peeled it back out the conduit so we've still got the original stuff in there and obviously that clips into that cowl in there so I want it to sit as OE as possible so you can see luckily I've got loads of these uh, clips that will just you know it'll just pop in there and I'll be able to clip that back in and then what I'm going to do is do this with conduit as well and some Tesla tape you know and do it all original so these are off of old looms and that I've uh, got so you can see it matches up perfectly and you won't even know that the wiring's been messed with so that's exactly how I like to do things just keep it looking original right so there we go so I've pretty much done all the wiring so it looks really OEM you know I've cable tied it up I've used all existing clips and I've used the existing holes just to wire all the conduit on you can see here all the conduits all taped up and everything I even drilled a hole in the bracket here so I can have it all nice and uh, tidy so that's going to be looking good out of the way and then what's going to happen is this cable ties to the slam panel and obviously I'll drill 11 mil hole in the top of the bumper bar so that I can mount this out of the way so it ain't in the way of the intercooler it looks a lot better so that looks fresh so now I've got to mount the bottom of this radiator again so you can see I've just sat and blacked up these brackets to make them a lot tidier they look a lot better now and then we're just going to swap these rubbers over that come from the existing brackets and they'll just sit in there nicely and then obviously these are a lot shorter like i showed you so that one's that one and that one's that one so you can see through here how far we are actually spacing this radiator back so it's quite a chunk that we're moving it back by and you can see the new brackets are all on there now and they drop the radiator down a little bit at the top as well just to give that clearance and a slam panel for this boost pipe so everything's been worked out that's why i like this kit it's properly worked out i like a bit of engineering obviously these ain't done up yet so don't worry about that that's not done up so we've just got to uh, push that radiator back a bit so you can see the spacers we're using nice aluminium ones i'd say that was about an inch and a half i haven't measured them yet and it's pretty much as far back as we can get it now there's no room in there at all now with that amount of uh, spacing back so uh, i hate running these stock fans i always pull them off and but i'm going to leave them in this car and keep the air con and everything all the comforts get that uh intercooler fitted on there now just got to trim up that crash bar so on the intercooler obviously we need to remove this uh trim along the bottom here because it sits right tight and flush and it sits behind there um, and then we're going to mount it central to the bumper bar or the crash bar whatever you want to call it and then we're going to drill two holes through the top uh, to get it mounted nice and central so i've just measured the center of the uh, crash bar which is there and then i've just measured the intercooler width and it's 60 centimeters so i'm going to cut 30 centimeters either side of this lip because obviously i can't get the intercooler up and mount it to this crash bar because obviously the lips in the way you see the mounting points so i'm gonna have to trim that off that's what i'm going to get to now so as i say you're just going to do 30 centimeters that way 30 centimeters that way get rid of this lip and then i can drill some holes and get this centralized in the bumper so it gets maximum airflow through their grill so i've just trimmed up the crash bar so you can see there, I'm just going to measure up the center line again so we can get this intercooler nice and straight. And you can see you've got these tabs on here at the minute. Got some locking bolts and some stainless bolts on there so they're never going to rust. These are alley brackets. So they're just going to tuck up underneath on this lip. Going to mark that up. Then we can get this intercooler fitted and get this pipe work sorted out. So it's going to fit nicely. So I just measured the center line there on the crash bar and I've also done here as well which is nine and a quarter centimeters. There's nothing worse than having a wonky intercooler sitting through the grill. I see it a lot. <laughs> it really, really does my head in. So there we go, the intercooler is all fitted. I've just done up the crash bar and it fits on there lovely. So you can see the proper stealth look that I love. You won't even see that behind the bumper. It won't even look like there's a, a intercooler in there. And you can see like why you have to move the rad and the uh, fans and everything back because literally we are right on the edge there of the gap so we only got like five mil or something down the back there so that's why you have to move the fans the rad and everything back so you can get the clearance there and there's no cutting needed to this front bumper so this front bumper needs no cutting to the back of it oh, the grill and everything fits and it just sits there in the airflow behind the grill so this is the left hand side pipe if you're wondering how you can tell a genuine Courtney Sport one it's got it etched in the side of the um, actual tank its end cap itself because obviously on these cars people try to sell replicas or whatever and if you just powder coat you know a stock one you're never going to know so with the Courtney ones they're obviously etched into the side of the end tank so if you need to know that's how you can check 
Right, so there you go, that's the intercooler fitted. So I just wanted to get a quick clip of the intercooler nicely fitted on there before I get the bumper back on. And you can see how well it fits. Like we are literally talking clearances like of millimeters. So everything fits perfectly. You can see I've made this top pipe fit on here as well. So the stock top pipes on there. But as I've said in previous videos, when you stamp on the throttle with these, they do have a tendency to try and suck shut. Um, if you don't remember the old RS turbo days, the bottom pipe on them used to suck shut and it was like hitting a brick wall. <laughs> and it does the same on these sort of things, but you don't really notice it as much. So I'm gonna make a hard pipe up for this in the future. I have actually got the additional pipe, which I'll show you here. So I could just order a nice bend that goes onto that. So I've got this Courtney Sport section here. You can see this one goes in here and replaces that pipe and sits there nicely. And that stops this obviously collapsing in the middle. That's exactly what it's designed to do. So the hard pipes they ain't just a fashion accessory. Um, it's because the, as these pipes get older and get softer, they do have a tendency to squash. I know obviously once it's under boost, it will be pressurized. So you're probably thinking, well, there's no need for that. But it's when you stamp on the throttle when the car hasn't got no boost inside the pipe work that it can suck shut. So what I'll probably do is I will fit this one in the future. Obviously I'll paint this in black because we're going for like a more of an OEM type look. You can actually fit this here and just cut like the pipe work there and have the original pipe work on there. But obviously it looked a bit weird, won't it, with the silicon pipe. So what I might do is I'll just measure that bend um, and have a look and see if I can find a silicon pipe that fits there like that. I know the Courtney do a kit with their Courtney Sport top hat and I have actually got a Courtney Sport top hat but it's polished which I don't really want to be painting. So as you can see here I actually got another Courtney Sport top hat spare and uh, but I really wanted to keep the stealth look with this car and um, it does actually improve it a little bit on throttle response to open up the bore um, I can't show you a comparison between a stock one at the minute but the bore is probably I don't know a third percent larger um, going into the throttle if I was going to fit this I would actually paint it like a satin black but you can't really see it under there anyway so I actually just found a spare top pipe that I didn't even realize I had and it's a hard pipe section that goes in here you can see joins onto the throttle body like that and it might actually go so that joins there about there so it looks like i will actually be able to fit that i didn't even realize i had that i just dug it out of my <laughs> my spares parts and uh, i might actually fit that so obviously give this a lick of paint fit it up satin black and this will go nicely with that pipe work so that's probably what i'm going to actually do right now i don't know the chances of that happening but uh, i've actually made this pipe up a long time ago you can see it fits absolutely perfectly it's just got a um, make a silicon join that goes up into that part which I've got loads of joiners and it fits straight onto the Courtney um, bottom pipe as well so obviously it's a bit scratched up it's going to paint it satin black and it's going to look OEM so I stripped that pipe down you can see here and I got rid of that uh, gloss black and all that chip look that was on it give it a bit of primer and some satin black obviously go with the rest of the pipe work and I was trying to work out where I got this pipe from because obviously I make all the pipe work up myself a lot of people ask me when they see my engine bays you can see I just get uh, two and a half inch like various different bends or whatever and I make up all the pipe work myself so I just got to get some hosing obviously I've got boxes and boxes of silicon and uh, try and find a, a section of black silicon to go in here just going to measure it up so we've got a little join here to go to the top hat um, I think I made this one for the Courtney top hat but it should fit the stock top hat no problem but there we go the top pipe's complete I just found a bit of silicon in there trimmed it up perfect size for that hose as well um, wasn't expecting to be fitting this today but got a nice new power pipe to be fitted so it's a lot better than that nasty rubber one on there that you see obviously it's going to collapse right so just removed the intake off the uh, top of the turbo so we could do a boost pressure test now if you ain't familiar with that basically we're going to pressurize the system to about 40 psi and um just using a schrader valve like you would get on your bike and then we just pressurize the system with air to about 40 psi and then we check for boost leaks which i'm going to show you um, while we're on the subject of this if anyone's got a black intake uh, drop me a message on instagram and i'll take it off your hands because obviously this goes with nothing inside the engine base just one i had laying around so basically we just pressurize the system from the top of the turbo because it's crucial on these systems because they've got a math sensor that they get the uh, right amount of airflow and if you map a car with a boost leak you're going to have a problem with fueling all the time especially when you sort the boost leak out right so you know you've got a pressurized system when you pump it up with like 40 psi and the only um, noise you can hear is when you like relief the pressure out of the vacuum hoses. So you know you've got a pressurized system and if you can't hear any leaks or you know you go around the car and use a uh, fairy liquid water around any of the joints and you see any bubbling, that's how you know you've got a proper system. So you need to keep the pre system pressurized as I do. Keep with about 40 PSI pressure in there and then you can hear it coming out of here when you let it off so you know you've got a properly pressurized system.
So boost pressure test is all done and there's absolutely no leaks at all. And if this engine bay is not some super clean engine bay that you're used to seeing on the channel, it's because I wanted to do this in stages, you know, with the intercooler, the exhaust, and go through the stages of people actually doing this to the car themselves, you know, helping them out. So that if you've gone and bought a stock one of these and you can allow it to breathe, you can make these mods better, you can do these little things, you can keep the air con, you know, all the sort of stuff that you usually would want in the car if you've got a family or whatnot. I know it's not some like, fancy engine bay like that where it's got all the different parts you know forge engine cams the whole lot eds manifold bigger injectors breather system you know it's it's a totally different type of engine bay so you can see like that's what they can be like and they can be even better than that as well and then you know these are like the stock looking engine bays with bolt-ons and that's exactly what i want to do with this car on the channel so that you you know it's more realistic for a lot of people out there they haven't got the time they haven't got the money to be spending but they still want some power you know nice uh, seven seater car good looking car for the family you know they're good looking in all different colors black red silver they all look good um so yes it's a shame that um voxel didn't actually spend more time on the astra gsi body kit you know and put arches on it like this i know they did on the triple eight but you can see like obviously they kept the stock arches which is you know it's it's metal it's not plastic over the top but it uh, would have been nice to have done like a more of a wider arch kit on the um the GSIs, but they didn't. So you can see this engine base totally untidy or whatever, but it's still gonna make 280 horsepower. Um, all I've got to do now to do, really do that is to put a VXR math in there, which I've got spares. VXR injectors, well, I've got spares because I'll take the uh, spares out to go to 630s. And then tidy up the engine bay a little bit. There's a, as I say, there's a rocker cover leak coming from down here. So this has got to be changed. The gasket's got to be changed. Why that's off, give it a lick of silver paint. You can see the car at the minute. It's got an Opal OPC grill on here at the minute. Um, thinking I might go back to the genuine Vauxhall GSI grill. Maybe change the badge to Opal. Um, I do like the way that the GSI grill does go with the, the bottom grill as well. It was meant for it. And obviously only the GSIs come with this grill whereas a lot of models did come with that OPC grill. Well, so that's the Vauxhall GSI grill. There's the Fira GSI grill that comes with the car in um, in UK, and you can see it does go with the grill. Let me know in the comments section whether you think I should put uh, the Opal grill. If you've got an OPC grill, that'd be great. If someone's got one in for sale, I'd definitely, definitely have that off you. So message me on Instagram if you do have one of them sitting around. <laughs>